in the last few months But I know I've had it better than some In a town that's printing money But there's no room at the end Town of milk and honey, let them eat cake again. But it never, never slowed me down much. It never, never slowed me down till now.
We will fight with the strength of love. Words keep piling up deep down in my chest. Late nights sifting through the heaviness. Nothing I might find to say could ever be enough. Still I sing with the strength of love. The blossom in the barrel and a fist to the sun. We resist with the strength of love. Uptown, weary voices scraping the sky. Every day I'm on the front line. Every name they're crying out, we long to someone. Crying out. But will they live to see their promise through? No war against the innocent could ever be won. We will fight with the strength of love. Records broken, is it bound to repeat? Heart broke open, but it's full of seeds. Now everywhere from underground, they're rising up. Rising up with the strength of love. Oh, I believe there's still a chance of peace. Yeah, until justice is more than just a dream. The only way there is everybody getting free. You and I, you and I, you and I, you and I, we will fight.
Everything seems limitless. Gravity still holding hands while making plans. Sweet caress, you tried it on before. You always want more. Make the best of what we found from what we've been handed down. From what we've been handed down. McNamara, Vice President of Brand Marketing and Communications at Blue Cross of Idaho. I want to welcome you all to the annual WASMU Center for Human Rights Change Your World Celebration. With everything that is going on in the world, it feels like the WASMU Center and the work it does is more important than ever. For more than 25 years, the WASMU Center has led the charge to make sure that Idaho is a place where everyone can feel welcome and safe. 
The center is dedicated to promoting respect and human dignity for every Idahoan through education. And Blue Cross of Idaho is proud to stand alongside the Wasp Center and our common mission. For more than 75 years, Blue Cross of Idaho has been dedicated to serving all Idahoans. And while we may feel divided, now is the time to remember that we are strongest when we come together. As Idahoans, we have real power when we support each other. When we stand beside each other through challenging times, we become stronger than ever before. The center itself was born during challenging times when neighbors and citizens came together to fight for the future of Idaho. And now, by focusing on education, the Wasmuth Center is building a foundation for Idaho to build upon for generations to come. It takes this kind of passion to create real and lasting change. The center's founders, leadership, and volunteers have always turned to its original mission as a guiding light to promote respect for human dignity and diversity through education, and to foster individual responsibility to work for peace and justice. Blue Cross of Idaho is proud to be able to stand beside the Wasman Center as it continues to fight to make Idaho the kind of place where everyone feels welcome. Thank you all for your support, and remember, we're all stronger together. Thank you, Blue Cross of Idaho, for sponsoring the 18th annual Change Your World Celebration. As a caring corporate citizen, you are making a difference in people's lives and making Idaho a healthier and a better place to live. And to our audience this evening, we're delighted that you could join us. Before I head to the studio to continue the program from the main stage, I wanted to spend a little time with you in the Idaho and Frank Human Rights Memorial. Located in the heart of Idaho's capital city, I often tease the mayor, we are the heart of the city. I'm standing just outside the Marilyn Schuler Classroom for Human Rights, located within the footprint of the memorial. Yes, this has been another year of COVID and the politics of COVID, a year in which lives have been disrupted and lives lost. And when we had them, we cherished the moments when we felt safe enough to gather with friends and family, safe enough to return to the workplace, and safe enough to resume aspects of what we had once just viewed as our normal routine. For the Wasma Center, 2021 is also a milestone. We're celebrating our 25th anniversary. Founded in 1996 for the purpose of constructing a memorial to human rights, the visionary leaders in our organization, Lisa Ullman, Leslie Drake, and the Reverend Dr. Nancy S. Taylor, could not have imagined the impact of their efforts. With them, gathered a community willing to donate time, talent, and treasure. Countless volunteers throughout the state who came together to build a site that echoed the ideals of a young girl. Between the ages of 13 and 15, Anne Frank penned what one reviewer called, and I quote, a great affirmative answer to the life question of today. For she shows how ordinary people within this ordeal consistently hold to the greater human values. How very poignant that message seems today. The statue of Anne Frank stands in the center of the memorial. I like to think that the memorial symbolically wraps its arms around her. Here, she is no longer in hiding. And here, she is joined in a chorus of voices who hold to those greater human values. The theme of tonight's anniversary year celebration is hear our voices. Note the plural, it is not a singular voice. Tonight, it is that chorus of voices, students, educators, musicians, faith, civic and community leaders who come together to share and celebrate the work of the WASMA Center for Human Rights. Yes, this is an important fundraiser for the organization. It helps to sustain and expand our annual education programming and outreach. So we invite you to check out the celebration auction and donation link that you will see scrolling throughout the program. 
So many businesses and individuals have contributed goods and services to support the center. And we've got some pretty fun and pretty special auction packages. So let's get started with the celebration. We are so grateful for our friends at Ersted Architects, for being a firm that believes that being different is good and that standing out from the crowd in terms of design and construction can be a powerful position. Thank you, Ersted, for sponsoring tonight's music. Let's hear the voices of Ben Burdick, Nicole Christensen, and Wade Short in song. Hear her voice. We ask something of each visitor to the Idaho and Frank Human Rights Memorial to come, to learn, to read, and then to think about what you see. It's in that thinking about human rights that we'll find the solutions and the courage we need to make Idaho a good place to live for every one of us, said Marilyn Schuler. Here's some stuff to make you feel a little better about what's going on right now. Charlie Chaplin song.
smile Though your heart is aching Smile even though it is breaking And when there are clouds in the sky You'll get by If you smile through your pain and sorrow Smile and maybe tomorrow You will see the sun come shining through Darling, if you would just light up your face with gladness Hide every trace of sadness And although a tear may be ever so near Oh, when there's a time you must keep on trying Smile, what's the use in crying? Thank you, Ben, Nicole, and Wade. They'll be back in just a few minutes. But I wanted to share a glimpse of another reason why this anniversary year is so special. You see, 25 years ago, the center was founded by a few who met around the dining table and in basement meeting rooms. At one time, it was even housed within one room in the literary log cabin. 14 years ago, we grew into our own 900 square foot office. But as we've grown, we've also discovered there's more to do. Our mission to promote respect for human dignity and diversity through education has never altered and is now being fulfilled with programming and resources on site in the memorial, off site in classrooms, companies, and communities throughout Idaho, and reaching national and international audiences online. Throughout the program, we're going to feature how we uphold our mission. For the past year and a half, businesses, foundations, and individuals have been contributing to construct a one-of-a-kind human rights education center within the footprint of a one-of-a-kind human rights memorial. We're in the final phase of fundraising and looking to break ground yet this fall. So here's a sneak peek from Erstead Architects. Let's take a glimpse as we build our future.
Dan approached us to look at the Wasmuth Education Center on the heels of uh, designing and working so closely with him for the Maryland Schuler Outdoor Classroom. We were beyond elated. Our opportunities to impact the design uh, is professionally something beyond imagination and belief and so exciting and so exhilarating. But it's the, it's the mission and the vision and the message, the human rights message that inspires us daily to be great citizens. And my entire team and staff um, get that message every week. We had an amazing design team and uh, lots of ideas as a collective uh, in our office. And um, perhaps the, the, one of the most important periods during the design process was the entire office uh, had a tour of the memorial uh, by Dan. And um, all of a sudden, this center was very real. And um, the center not only was now embedded in the quotes and embedded in the uh, site, it was also embedded in everyone's hearts. And I think when you start to look at a design from the, from the heart and, and from the soul, all of a sudden it has magic and it works. We have light along the ceiling here. And then at each of these panels, we have light coming down or coming out from the building, always trying to be a beacon, always trying to be a, a lantern of hope. Yes, it's pretty exciting. Not only are we building our future, we're building a beacon of light in the state to shine out during times of darkness. We know our work is not done. Marvelous that you should care for me. It's awfully nice, it's paradise. It's what I love to see. Okay. 
While we have been together in the memorial, tonight's celebration co-host, KTVB anchor Mark Johnson, whose very name created a Twitter storm a few months ago, has been visiting with a few more of our friends. So, hey, Mark, where are you and who are you with? All right, Dan, thanks so much. We're here at Crane Creek Country Club alongside Ken with 44 North, an amazing local company that will also change your world. Right, Ken? Absolutely. All right. And then behind us is Joe, Crane Creek's doctor of mixology here at the bar, who is going to fix us up something that will change all of our worlds, if you will. So, Ken, first of all, tell us what you brought. 
Well, we've got Idaho's famous 44 North Mountain Huckleberry Vodka. Yes. Featuring Idaho Distilled Potato Vodka. Come back with that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and infused with huckleberries, which are the state fruit of Idaho. So we like to say this is the best of Idaho between the potatoes and the huckleberries, the best of Idaho in a bottle. Joe, what is the name of this drink and what do you have in it? So this is uh, Huckletini. Huckletini. I told you this is gonna change your world. I have 44 North Huckleberry Vodka, fresh huckleberries, huckleberry juice from fresh huckleberries, right? simple syrup, and lime juice. I'm sensing a theme here. Yeah, we like huckleberries. Yeah, okay. So what goes in first? We do two ounces of 44 North Vodka, huckleberry. I add fresh huckleberry juice. Simple syrup. And lime juice. All right, we shake it all together. Add a little bit more ice. Strain. And we will garnish huckleberries for girls. Ken, what makes uh, 44 North tick, if well, you will? The key is the Idaho distilled potato vodka, mm -hmm. which we run through two different types of stills for extra smoothness. Uh, just you know, extracts all the stuff that uh, makes you feel a little fuzzy the next day. <laughs> and then paired with the huckleberry, it just uh, gives you all those uh, Idaho flavors you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And then here on the Wasman Center for Human Rights Change Your World Celebration, how did 44 North get involved in this event tonight? For me, it was very easy to get involved because of the fact that it's something that we believe in wholeheartedly, human rights, but also something that has an Idaho spin to it. And pretty much anything Idaho, 44 North wants to be part of that, given our ingredients, um, our success here, and the way the community here embraces our products. Well, thanks for what Ken, you and your company does in our community. We're happy to have you here. And we're really happy to sample the wares. Ken, Joe, cheers. Cheers. Thanks for helping change the world. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Appreciate you. Oh, oh, that is good. Oh, ho, 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 ho. another please. <laughs> awesome. Good evening. I'm Bob Sarney, founder and CEO of Ion Agility. We are proud to be sponsors of this year's Change Your World celebration. Human dignity, respect, justice, and peace are the mission of the Wasman Center for Human Rights, a mission that is critical to the success of our community, our society, and ultimately the world. I wanna thank you for your participation, your contribution, your continued support. Have fun and show your love. Thank you, 44 North Vodka, for sponsoring tonight's signature drink. And thank you to our very special friends at Ion Agility for being a program sponsor and helping organizations transform their business by creating a culture of collaboration and incorporating business agility into the product development processes. We are so grateful for your support. Well, as Mark and I head to the production stage, Let's welcome our keynote, a man whose personal story and professional commitment as a businessman, activist, and philanthropist is, as reported by Forbes magazine, taking care of his employees first, helping the communities in which he operates, having the courage to take position on social issues, and being extremely accountable to consumers. Ladies and gentlemen, our celebration keynote, the founder and CEO of Chobani, Hamni Yulakaya.
Hello, my name is Hamdi Lukaya. I'm the founder and CEO of Chobani. Thank you, Wasmuth Center, for inviting me to be part of the Change Your World celebration. The work you do to promote respect for human dignity and diversity is so inspiring, and I am thrilled to be here with you today. Many of you might know Chobani as a food maker, but what we really want to make is a difference in people's life. On belief that I hold strongly is that business can be a force for good. At Chobani, we put humanity first every day by prioritizing communities and people. To us, that means supporting immigrants and refugees through employment, speaking out against family separations at the border, promoting diversity and inclusion with our workforce, supporting farmers, honoring veterans, and committing to living wages and great benefits. When it comes to issues we care about, we never take a backseat. We feel it is our responsibility as a corporate citizen and business leader to step up and speak out whenever we can to help those in need. In December of 2020, it came to my attention that the NF Frank Memorial in Boise, Chobani's backyard, was defaced with Nazi swastikas. I was so upset to learn of this blatant act of hatred in a great state of Idaho that I knew Chobani had to step in and speak out against hatred and darkness. America is an amazing country. Nowhere else in the world can you do what you can, what you can do here. But for that, sometimes we had bad apples that make us feel deep sorrow. We have to meet moments like this with support for each other and teach those that come next, our young people and children, how to make positive change. I do believe that together, our voices of love and inclusion will always ring louder than those who hate and darkness. And by speaking out against hatred and injustice, we empower others to do the same through education and act of kindness from an individual or even a business, we can make tomorrow better than today. I want to thank the Wasmuth Center for being a beacon of light for our community. I still remember in eighth grade when we took a guided tour of the Anne Frank Memorial and my eyes were finally open to injustice and being an upstander. That memory will forever stay with me. Thank you, Hamdi. Tonight, we may be physically distant, but we're coming together socially to celebrate the Wasma Center for Human Rights and the Idaho and Frank Human Rights Memorial. Now that we've both made it to the studio, joining me tonight is KTVB anchor Mark Johnson, whose career in broadcast journalism has cemented him in the heart of the community as a voice for goodness. Welcome, Mark. Thanks for having me, Dan. Tonight, I come here not as a broadcast journalist, but as a member of the community. And as you just saw that young man and many more like him say, what you're doing at the Wasmuth Center for Human Rights at the Anne Frank Memorial is making a difference in our community. Thank you for what you're doing and the beacon of light that you are. Dan, I have to tell you that seeing the new Wasmuth Education Center during tonight's pre-function was spectacular. I had goosebumps. And just as you said, it really is a beacon of light. And I know that you're in the final phase of fundraising. And of course, the big question is, what is the status right now of that campaign? Where are you? Uh, Mark, this really is an exciting campaign. Recognizing both the need for and the impact of the center's work, individuals, businesses, and foundations throughout the Northwest have contributed and what I think speaks directly to the value of the project is that donors are specifically requesting they want their name or company associated with what the center stands for. We have just a couple of remaining donor recognition opportunities sponsoring feature areas within the building, original art pieces that will showcase the art of human rights, and even a new exterior donor wall that will span from the entrance to the center to the 8th Street entrance to the memorial. Well, I know that you can contact the Wasma Center and see how you and your company can support the construction of this beautiful, amazing, one-of-a-kind centerpiece in our city, the Human Rights Education Center. And as Dan noted, it, it, we're also building for the future of Idaho. You know, speaking of the art that will be showcased in the new Wasmuth Education Center, 
Tonight's celebration, Fun to Need, comes with an added challenge match. Our goal is to raise 5000 during the celebration program to support the annual K-12 Human Rights Art Contest. You know, each year the center receives hundreds of entries from throughout the state, each entry reflecting the artist's interpretation of and reflection on human rights. So to start tonight's Fun to Need, Bobby Hansberger, a dear friend and supporter in our community, has pledged $1,000 with an added challenge. If we can raise the other $4,000 during this program, Bobby will donate a framed limited edition of Eagle and Dragon by Boise artist Lawan T to be showcased in the new Wasmuth Education Center. It is beautiful indeed. What a fun challenge. Not only will we fund the annual art contest tonight, we can also bring a powerful piece and a tremendous story into the center. Let's hear now from the artist. Here's Luan Teed. Hi everyone, my name is Luan Teed. I'm an illustrationist here in Boise, Idaho. Uh, my piece is called Eagle and Dragon. And um, just to give you some more context about it, as an adoptee from China, I've always had a complicated relationship about my nationality and my ethnicity. This piece was a way for me to better understand the relationship I have with both countries. It's so easy for me to identify with what I look like on the outside and forget who I am on the inside. Before anything else, I'm American. I would consider myself American Chinese, not Chinese American. Much like the moon and sun, they're opposite sides of the same coin. I plan to move forward in my life harnessing the power of both nations within me. My hope is that they find harmony in my tumultuous spirit, but who knows how long my personal world war will rage on. I'll check back in in five years from now. What the world needs now is love Thing that is just too little of what the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not just for some, but for everyone. Lord, we don't need another mountain. There are mountains and hillsides enough to climb. There are oceans and rivers enough to cross, enough to last till the end of time. What the world needs now. There is just too little love. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not just for some, but for everyone. Lord, we don't need another meadow. There are cones. to grow There are some dreams and moon dreams enough to shine Lord if you listen close if you want to know if you want to know what the world needs now is love sweet love it is the only just too little love. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not just for some, but for every, 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 every one.
human rights is not just for older students or adults. Hi, I'm Leslie White, Education Director here at the Wasma Center for Human Rights. Each year, the Human Rights for Young Listeners Committee proudly presents the Summer Reading Program, especially designed for kids ages four through eight. Fostering compassion for one another and building community begins at a very young age. During these sessions, children are introduced to important themes and keywords, such as kindness, empathy, respect, how to be an upstander, and how one person can make a difference. Through story time, games, activities, and art projects, this program gives children the overall foundation for future lessons on the Holocaust and human rights when they become age appropriate. This year, our theme was the nature of human rights. Each week, children were treated to themes such as you matter, be a kindness hero, and respect for all living things. They also participated in the Butterfly Project, a global and unifying memorial to the youngest victims of the Holocaust. By coloring a butterfly that will eventually become part of a larger display, they are contributing to an ongoing dialogue that empowers people of all backgrounds and beliefs to create a more peaceful world. At the conclusion of each session, parents are provided with a complete list of books featured during the four weeks of the program, should they wish to purchase them or check them out from the library. We want the kids to have fun learning. After all, doing good is good for you, but you don't have to take my word for it. Hear her voice. Kind words can be short and easy to speak, but their echoes are truly endless. Mother Teresa. Wow, Dan, what did I see? 35 legacy sponsors supporting tonight's Change Your World celebration. That's what we call total community buy-in, for sure. And to all the businesses and individuals on behalf of the community, thank you. It really does take a community. And Mark, it really is a community. Or as we introduced in the celebration pre-function, it is a chorus of voices, each bringing his, her, their passion and dedication to protect and promote human rights. As we've already seen tonight, Mayor Lauren McLean and Sister Carol Ann Wasmuth brought their voices to amplify the words that are etched into the stone of the Idaho and Frank Human Rights Memorial. Those words both inspire and guide the work of the Wasmuth Center for Human Rights. The center's education programming has been designed for a wide range of ages, as you've seen in these videos, and audiences. And I loved seeing the younger ones at the memorial attending the summer reading program, but I'm curious about the cost, as any parent is, or the registration fee when parents sign up their kids to take part in a program like that. Actually, Mark, the program is free. As a matter of fact, most of the programs we are featuring tonight are free. It's why tonight's celebration is such an important fundraiser. Proceeds from this important evening guarantee our program success each year and advance our statewide mission of promoting respect for human dignity and diversity through education. And you mean free, free. just like tonight's virtual celebration, commercial free and free to you. Human rights doesn't just belong to those who can afford them. Exactly. Let's take a look at another free program and a resource. Love, justice, respect, equality, kindness, compassion, equal in dignity, and rights. Hello, my name is Wes Spencer, creator and co-producer of Equal in Dignity and Rights. In partnership with the Wasma Center for Human Rights, we created an educational tool that highlights the social, 
political, structural, and civil contributions of 12 leaders whose words are etched in stone at the Idaho and Frank Human Rights Memorial. Sure, you may have seen the words of these figures quoted during your lifetime, but who are they? What were the circumstances that led to their world-changing perspectives on life? What did they do? Through equal in dignity and rights, young people ages 10 to 14 will be engaged through an online portal called Schoology. There, they will learn of the unique lives of our 12 featured leaders by watching short videos that cover important life details, and they'll create an online journal in which they each write about and reflect on the lessons they've learned. Our goal is to plant the seeds of deep reflection that allow young people to see themselves in our influencers, as well as to provide detailed accounts of how they came to influence the world in the way that they have. They'll accomplish all of this through the act of writing, or better put, journaling. By the end, each student will possess a better understanding of our influencers, as well as how we are all equal in dignity and rights. Hear his voice, civil rights, what black folks are given in the United States on the installment plan, as in civil rights bills, not to be confused with human rights, which are dignity, stature, humanity, respect and freedom, belonging to all people by right of their birth, Dick Gregory. I'm Cole Favor and standing here next to the sculpture of the other in the Idaho Anne Frank Human Rights Memorial, I can trace how injustice devolves within a community from language to elimination. The spiral of injustice is a model created by the Wasmuth Center for Human Rights to understand how everyday societal practices create groups of individuals who are viewed as the other. Used to illustrate a pattern or progression of injustice, the model helps in educating for and about social justice. Recently published, The Spiral of Injustice, the LGBTQ Lived Experience, is the fourth in a series of eBooks that add both definition and narrative to the stages of injustice. Available for free to download on the Center's website, each of the booklets has five chapters written by five different authors. As just one of the authors, I shared, the white marble walls, floors, curved stairs, and domed ceilings of the Idaho Capitol make a particular sound. It's a hush, hush, hush. For decades we've come, the gender pioneers and those like me who are gay, we've come asking for mention for safety, really. For years, we came in suits and skirts. Some of us shined our shoes. To be respectful, we came with respect. It's harder to be cruel when you look a person in the eye. For almost a decade, we came politely asking to tell our stories, to educate. And then for a decade more, politely, we came to ask to be included in the state's anti-discrimination law. Four words sexual orientation, gender identity. Those are our labels, our safety and existence, our civil rights, employment, our right to do business, to be served. 10 long years of asking, yet still, to them, we did not exist. The spiral of injustice rests on a fundamental principle that the biases we have are not inherent, but instead learned through individual, cultural, and institutional practices and reinforced through acts of discrimination that we both witness and ourselves perform throughout our lives. Etched in stone at the memorial here, Mahatma Gandhi reminds us to make injustice visible. Hear my voice. Everything I do is about equal opportunity, race, gender, sexual orientation. Let's get over it and let's celebrate our differences. Legend and pioneer, Billy King.
Billie Jean King. Wow. We'll talk about somebody whose words and actions are a source of inspiration. My family and I, Dan, as you know, are constantly drawn to the memorial. We bring friends and colleagues to share this very important and beautiful site. Let's step into the memorial while we listen to the bridge written and performed by our good friend and Boise's own, Steve Eaton. of human rights regardless of who you are. It is also a representation of our past to ensure better tomorrow. So in this time of need, we're here to say that we stand with them and we support everything they stand for. Good evening. I heard a quote in one of my teacher preparation courses by the American philosopher John Dewey. He stated simply that education is not preparation for life. It is life. It makes me think that human rights education must be about the quality of that life. My name is Ben Harris, and I'm a teacher at Bishop Kelly High School, and I'm also committed to lifelong learning. I continue my professional development not only to feed my desire to learn, but also as a gift to my students, introducing them to resources that are so much more than textbook references. It's why I'm a regular participant in the educator professional development provided by the Wasma Center for Human Rights. 
Whether attending the Dr. Marilyn Howard Summer Institute for Idaho Educators or a one-day workshop, I can count on the center for providing a regular calendar of opportunities throughout the year. With topics such as civility and compassion in the classroom, human rights, human dignity, or this month's workshop on Nazi racism and the Holocaust. Educators are introduced to scholars, lesson ideas, and supplemental materials that impact both teaching and learning in the classroom. Even when the pandemic dramatically changed or canceled in-person professional development, the center expanded its online opportunities, many of them free of charge and eligible for continuing education credits through Boise State University. And honestly, each time I've attended a session, I've walked away with center-produced posters, videos, and program materials, each designed to strengthen human rights education in Idaho. Thank you to the board, staff, and volunteers at the Wasma Center for their commitment to fulfilling the mission to promote human dignity and diversity through education. And from this Idaho educator, thank you to the celebration donors whose financial support makes it possible and makes a difference in my classroom. It really is about the quality of life I want for my students. Hear his voice. Dr. Chaim Gennat wrote, Dear teacher, I am a survivor of a concentration camp. My eyes saw what no person should witness, gas chambers built by learned engineers, children poisoned by educated physicians, infants killed by trained nurses, women and babies shot and killed by high school and college graduates. So I am suspicious of education. My request is, help your students to become human. Your efforts must never produce a learned monster, skilled psychopaths, or educated Eichmanns. Reading, writing, and arithmetic are only important if they serve to make our children more humane. Just as Ben introduced, Human rights education really is about the teaching and learning of what it means to be a community, what it means to be an upstander when we hear or witness injustice, and what it means when we recognize and honor the core of our humanity. The center recognizes the importance of educators throughout the state who, just like Ben, make a difference in the lives of their students. And tonight we're delighted to recognize an Idaho educator who is making a difference. The 2021 Idaho Human Rights Educator of the Year is Karen Tyler, whose passion for both teaching and learning and curriculum development is a testimony to what Maya Angelou noted. Teach young people early on that in diversity there is beauty and there is strength. Ladies and gentlemen, Karen Tyler from Mountain View High School in the West Ada School District. Hi, so I'm Karen Tyler. Um, this is an honor and I'm incredibly humbled because I know that there's so many educators in Idaho that work so hard to help promote uh, human rights in their classes and try to encourage students to be kinder to one another. Um, I will say that teaching is a very hard job, that sometimes you leave and you're disillusioned and disenchanted or you feel burned out. But what I've learned is that the Human Rights Education Center, whenever I feel that way, I go to them. And it reignites my inspiration for what I do and my passion. Uh, I, I absolutely love how they give me tools that I can use in my classroom every day to teach my kids, um, just in how to act toward them and how to teach them to act toward each other. Um, they offer workshops that inspire and um, they bring together educators that have that same desire, which builds this nice, amazing community where we can rely on each other and help each other through those difficult times. So once again, I'm in incredibly humbled to be given this um, award um, because I know that there's so many in our community that I've worked with and that I've been able to take classes with through the center um, that have made such a big difference. Thank you. 
Hello, I'm Georgian Benjamin, the Executive Director of Optum Idaho, and we are so excited to be a sponsor this year. At Optum Idaho, we believe in one person, one family, and one community at a time. We understand that each individual and every family has a unique road to wellness, health, and hope. And it is our commitment to help transform Idaho's behavioral health outpatient system by focusing on helping people reach recovery in their own health journey. We believe it is critical to invest in our communities and support our partners' vital work all throughout the GEM State. That is why we are so pleased to be supporting your event. So thank you for letting us take part. The Anne Frank Memorial and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights embodies what we at Optum Idaho strive for each day. By ensuring healthcare is community-based, available where people live and work, and infuses the principles of recovery and resiliency in every service and member interaction. Once again, we at Optum Idaho are proud to support the important work each of you are doing. Have you checked out the celebration auction yet? We have a wide array of packages donated by both individuals and businesses to support the Wasmus Center Celebration Fundraising. This year, we're featuring another one of Todd Van Fleet's signature photographs. Cabin crews are as 40 inches by 60 inches. I love how Todd plays on the childhood feelings evoked by riding a bike. We're grateful to Chris Kellogg and Ann Merritt for their annual donation of one of Todd's pieces. You know, their connection to the center began when they traveled with us to Cambodia and witnessed a distribution of bicycles and backpacks on our annual Pedals and Packs service project. I'm gonna make a change for once in my life yeah. It's gonna feel real good Gonna make a difference Gonna make it right As I turn up the color on My favorite winter coat This world is blowing my mind I see the kids in the street not enough to eat who am i to be blind pretending not to see their need a summer's disregard a broken bottle top and a worn man's soul yeah. they follow each other on the wind you know because they got no place to go that's why i want you to selfish kind of love it's time that i realize and there are some with no home not a nick too long could it be you really me pretending that they're not alone a willow deeply sky somebody's broken heart and a washed out dream yeah. they follow the pattern of the wind you see because a guy Please do me. Then 
you make the change and the time is right open your heart open your mind and make that change I'm excited that HP is a sponsor and supporter of the Wasma Center for Human Rights. The center's mission to promote respect for human dignity and diversity aligns with our company values, and we support the human rights education provided by the center and in the memorial. Respect is core to who we are at HP, and that respect includes embracing our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion every day. Being a welcoming and inclusive community is all of our responsibility. And at HP, we value the human rights perspective the Wasma Center provides to all of us. Dan, I know the center has taken a number of trips to the Gorongosa National Park in Mozambique. We should point out that the celebration auction also includes a package that begins in South Africa on May 29th and ends on June 2nd of 2022 after seven days and six nights in Gorongosa. What an amazing adventure donated by the Carr Foundation and the Gorongosa Project. And as we see on the screen behind us, the center receives a lot of support from these amazing businesses throughout our community in the Valley. This is just a listing of the celebration event the program and the legacy sponsors. Thank oh, you. It's true, Mark. In addition to night sponsors, as I noted, we are also so grateful for the businesses who are donating time, talent, and treasure to support the construction of the new Wasmuth Education Center. And so to so many nationwide who now use the center's human rights certification program as they onboard new employees or are dedicated to establishing a culture that embraces diversity, equity, and inclusion in the workplace. Kobe Annan, United Nations Secretary General stated, we may have different religions, different languages, different colored skin, but we all belong to one human race. That is the reality that lies in the heart of the Wasmuth Center's mission to promote respect for human dignity and diversity through education. One human race in the school, the office, and the community living and working together. My name is Robert H. Johnson, Jr., founder and principal consultant at RHJ Consulting Group and a Watsman Center board member. The commitment I have to diversity, equity, and inclusion is at the core of my work. It is also why I completed the Center's Human Rights Certification Program. Delivered as an online resource, the six-hour program grounds participants in six themes, diversity, inclusion, ethics, civility, respect, and being an upstander in the workplace. For the individual, completing the certification program is a testimony to the values brought into the office. For the company, employees in the program are introduced to core concepts that can become the basis for a continuing conversation regarding the policies and processes that shape the DEI culture of the organization. Just $35, the certification program is self-paced, is organized in short segments that provide knowledge, prompt reflection, and call for action, as well as engages each participant in an online community designed to reinforce the learning. Each successful certification is a reminder that people of good intent and goodwill, people like you, are creating a new reputation for their department, their company, and their community as a place where human rights and human dignity are at the heart of daily living. One human race. Hear her voice. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Margaret Mead. Remember in school when classroom learning was enriched by going on a field trip? How about doing that as an adult in the workplace? My name is Danielle Crapo, Executive Assistant for Idaho First Bank. I'm also the Wasman Center board member. A month ago, while bank leaders from Idaho across the state gathered in Boise, I arranged to bring them to the Idaho Anne Frank Human Rights Memorial for a docent-led tour. And what does the Human Rights Memorial in the capital city mean to our community and state? It's a place of hope, dignity, and respect. It's an international site of conscience that honors the victims of hate, intolerance, and violence, and those who confront injustice. Seen through the eyes and heard through the voice of Dostin, the memorial presents a story. While, as one visitor posted on TripAdvisor, 
The water feature, seating, architecture, and landscaping put one in a serene mood. People of all ages can benefit from a visit here and be inspired to spread some peace in the world. What did the group that I brought to the center have to say? They were brought to tears. They can't believe a wonderful place like this is in the middle of downtown Boise, Idaho. And as the director, Dan Prinzing, once told me before a tour, I hope you find yourself here, as I did. Yes, the Idaho and Frank Human Rights Memorial is a wonderful spot to bring students. But I'd also encourage you, schedule a tour for your office staff or company team and let them discover why Boise is a home to Human Rights Memorial. Etched in the stone, Idaho Governor Cecil Andrus cautioned, our dreams of equality and respect will never come true if we permit the seeds of division to be sown. Let Idaho stand for fairness and let us always reject the forces of hatred and bigotry. Hear his voice. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Dr. Seuss. As you have probably noticed in our theme tonight, hear our voices. We have featured over 30 different members of the Wasmuth community. Educators, students, artists, musicians, civic faith and business leaders. Yes, it is a chorus of voices. But Mark, we would like to recognize another voice in our community. Someone who has used his microphone as a voice for good. As a voice that denounces hate and injustice. Mark, with our gratitude, here's a little surprise for you. Oh no. At Delta Dental, our mission is to improve oral health for those in our community. We believe everybody deserves a healthy smile. A healthy smile can help lead to conversations where we can overcome some of the hatred and embrace our diversity. One of the core principles of the Wasmus Center is to provide education and awareness of how do we have those conversations on education, on embracing our diversity. And we believe that working together, Delta Dental and the Wasma Center can help our communities move forward. And Mark, I just wanna say the most heartbreaking part about this is that this is not the first time that these kids have heard something like this. And honestly, it probably won't be the last, but I'm sad, I'm hurt, and I'm extremely angry to know that this is still out there. Right now, this is bigger than soccer. It's bigger than youth sports. Mm -hmm. This is a true human issue. And I hope whoever wrote that is watching now will know that they will not win. And how about Jeremy's attitude? I know. Come see what we have. Yep. You know, you know that that idiot won't, but mm -hmm. come see it. All right, Alex, thanks. And it's worth noting that we debated whether we should run this story. On one hand, why give someone who can only be considered as the lowest form of scum any coverage for his racist beliefs, right? Uh, but just like the racist slurs on the Anne Frank Memorial and the Boise Middle Eastern restaurant last summer, this is another rallying opportunity for you, for, for us, for everyone, to stand up and say, whoever you are, you coward, no-name, derelict letter writer, you will lose. You're probably watching right now, and I can tell you, you already have lost because this is a place that we call home, a society of people of tolerance, acceptance, and inclusion, and will always be for us and our children and their children and generations to come. Again, you lose, we will win, and you need to leave right now, right now. And aside, if I might, just for a moment, if you'll allow me, after considering myself an Idahoan for more than half my life, I think I can speak for everyone watching, you watching tonight, and saying that what we just saw is deplorable, despicable, and does not represent our community or our state. And as we continue as a society to strive for acceptance and tolerance and compassion, three things you're passing on to your children, no doubt. Let's add one more teaching moment, action. We cannot be silent when it comes to acts of hate. We have to teach our kids that if they see something like what we just saw anywhere, anytime, to tell someone immediately, tell you, tell a friend, tell a teacher, call 911. Local police chiefs, I can tell you this, I know this for a fact, and also county sheriffs, 
have told their departments that elevated hate crimes are of high priority and they will not hesitate to respond to a situation that might give a great place like the one we live in a bad name because of one outsider, one derelict does not represent us. And we all need to get together on this and say, if you hate, you need to go. We don't want you here. I hope the discussion in your home begins tonight. Hey, what's up everybody? It's me here, Michael Franti, and I'm very, very grateful just to be here today for this virtual celebration of the Wasmuth Center and all the great work that has been done over the years there. And today, we want to recognize, actually to surprise, a very special person who is a TV anchor who's retiring this year and has used his microphone over the many years to denounce hate in the community and is truly a voice for good. So Mark Johnson, we just wanna say thank you for being that kind of person. It's so important these days that we have people who are willing and courageous enough just to stand up and speak truth to power even when sometimes it isn't popular so thank you for being a voice for people uh being treated equally for people getting along in the community and for ending hate and uh so i want to sing a song to you mark and to everybody out there uh who supports wasmuth in doing the great work that you guys do, especially in this crazy time that we're living in right now when there is so much hate out there and division out there. Uh, so this is a song for you, Mark, and for everybody. It goes like this. Why does everybody in the world seem so divided? And why has everybody gotta hate each other who decided? If I took all the world's pride and all the world's money and wrapped it in a blanket and put it in a buggy, would you see that maybe that baby was just the same as you are? You know it's never been easy. Every day for everybody ain't breezy. And I hope you realize when you look into another person's eyes, you know today would be a very good day to have a good day. You know today would be a very good day just to have a good day. With a little more love and a little more laughter, a little more good vibes, less disaster. Today would be a very good day just to have a good day all day long. All day long. You know today would be a very good day just to have a good day. You know today would be a very good day just to have a good day. With a little more love and a little more laughter. A little more good vibes, less disaster. Today would be a very good day, just to have a good day all day long. Hey, Mark, thanks for contributing to many good days and uh, for reaching out to generations of people in the community who just need to feel like they're not alone in supporting uh, positivity, uh, connection, diversity, community, and uh, people coming together. All right, peace. Thank you, Michael. Wow, Dan, that, uh, that really blew me away. Uh, my wife and I got a chance to meet Michael when he and his band were in town uh, last month, and um, that is from the heart. None of that is, comes from anywhere but inside of Michael. That is who he is. He believes in all of the tenets that are there etched in stone at the Wasmus Center for Human Rights. So for Michael to give me a shout out really means a lot to me. Thank you. Well, though we note that you have announced your retirement, we also know that you will continue to be that voice for goodness. So thank you, Mark. For our viewers this evening, I'm sure that they've begun to notice that there are core themes in the center's work. There are core values or dispositions that we view as central to a human rights framework. Whether introduced in the summer reading program, in our online student programming, in the memorial, or in our certification program, we consistently reinforce the commitment to and value for diversity, inclusion, respect, kindness, empathy. Let me introduce you to one more center program. Kindness, empathy, 
inclusion, respect, civility, compassion. Educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. Hello and welcome to 30 Days of Compassion. My name is Daisy O'Sullivan and I am so excited to bring this educational program to you, courtesy of the Wasmuth Center for Human Rights, home of the Idaho and Frank Human Rights Memorial. This educational program can be completed entirely online by individuals or in a classroom setting with collaboration encouraged. The program is designed to challenge middle and high school students to interact with five different themes over the course of 30 days. Ultimately, this program will lead students to a deeper understanding of what it means to be a compassionate member of society and how they can take steps in their daily lives to spread kindness, civility, respect, empathy, and inclusion. Each of the five modules on Schoology will cover one theme and will include six lessons to be completed over the course of six days. Days. Students can look forward to exploring videos, articles, poems, biographies, and songs that will comprehensively explore each theme. Students will get to respond to the modules through journal entries, social media posts, classroom discussions, and a creative final project that will look different for each student. The Wasmuth Center is so excited to share this program with you, and we cannot wait to continue our work with the next generation of compassionate leaders. Hear their voice. Educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. Aristotle. Well, before we close the celebration, we need to thank Blue Cross of Idaho, Optum Idaho, Erstad Architect, HP, and Ion Agility for sponsoring the event. Also like to recognize the talent and the amazing work of Stephanie Cullen, OMG female filmmakers. She is incredible for producing all of the celebration video segments. Stephanie, on behalf of the Wasmuth Center, the community, and me personally, because I know how talented you are. Wow, well done, and thank you again. And Mark? I'd like to thank our friends and media sponsor, KTVB Channel 7. What a team and what a pleasure it is to work with the station. And to all our family, friends, and supporters viewing the celebration, thank you. And with a reminder that tonight's celebration auction closes within the hour. So let's end the program with one more powerful voice. Thank you. Let us make a world.
If God lets me live, I shall not remain insignificant. I shall work in the world for mankind. Anne Frank find love in the strangest places the arms of an oak tree or a seed pod on the ground deep in the forest where we leave no traces we find love in the strangest places In the heart of Shaboba, or the heart of the maelstrom, the gates of heaven, or the gates of hell. And in our sins, or our saving graces, we find love in the strangest places. We find love in the strangest places We find love in the strangest places We find love in the strangest places 